I feel like I finally lucked out. While this E46 M3 came with a flood branded title, it's one of my projects I'm actually excited and anxious to work on. Sure it wasn't in the best condition when I got it, but every little thing that gets repaired feels like a big victory. Little by little this car is coming together and soon it will be finished, unlike Rich's flood salvage Tesla. Now I bring up Rich Rebuild's failures here for a legitimate reason. I personally expected a major disaster when I bought this M3 and I prepared myself for it when I started digging in, but it's been the exact opposite. Since flood cars generally have solid bodies, Bodies, they can be very alluring at auction. I commonly get sent links for specific flood cars asking what is wrong with them, and the answer is nobody knows, except God, the insurance company who totaled it, and its previous owner. If water enters the cabin, especially during a known natural disaster, 99 times out of 100, the car will end up being a total loss. And since you really can't take flood cars for test drives at salvage auction, even an inspection in person can leave a lot of guesses as to what's really wrong with them. The thing is, not all flood cars are bad. Some of them are major home runs, like our M3. Here's my quick advice if you're interested in a flood car project. First off, always inspect the car in person. Second, expect the worst and bid accordingly. Third, if you see a Tesla with mold growing on its seats and door panels, walk the other way. Keep in mind, one thing that really helped us out is the age of this car. Newer cars have much more sophisticated electrical systems. The newer the car, the more modules, the harder and expensive a flood repair will likely be. I've shown you in multiple ways how easy it really is to maintain an E46. It reminds me a lot of my Simply Safe home security system that I've been using near two years years now. Since everything is wireless and modular, it can evolve along with your lifestyle. I recently added a second keypad to my system so I can manage everything wirelessly from my bedroom. Please exit now. And since most of Simply Safe sensors are wireless, all you do is take them out of the box, prepare the double-sided tape on the back, and place them wherever you want. A couple months ago, I repaired this leaky pipe under my sink, so I placed my water sensor here just for a few days to make sure that my repair was adequate. When you visit simplysafe.com slash samcrack or just click the link below, you'll be able to custom tailor the perfect home security system for your living space. Make sure you add a couple Simply Cams to your order. I love these because you can monitor your home at any time using the Simply Safe app, and there's a walkie-talkie feature built in. If anybody at any time tries to tamper with your Simply Safe system or say the Wi-Fi goes out, it'll keep working and notify the appropriate authorities in case of an emergency. And my favorite part is the fact that you own all the equipment and there's zero contracts. It's not like the old school security companies that hold you hostage and make you sign a contract. There's none of that nonsense with Simply Safe, and it's very affordable with home monitoring starting at just 50 cents a day. So again, visit simplysafe.com slash Sam Crack, and I got to give a huge thanks to Simply Safe for giving me great peace of mind and for also sponsoring this video. these fog lamp bezels on the internet they're pretty cheap about 25 bucks for the pair and they look to be really decent quality the only problem is all I could find was this fake carbon fiber pattern I don't really like the way it looks it's not gonna match anything else on that M3 so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sand these down and we're gonna paint them black to match the rest of the trim on the car If you 
remember when I was checking out the car before I bought it, one of my biggest complaints about the interior is how just worn out the steering wheel is. So I pull it off real quick and the entire clock spring fell apart while I was in there. So at this point, we just kind of need to disassemble the uh, steering column trim here. I've loosened pretty much everything up on it and these two pieces should come out of place. There it goes. All right, there it is. We just gotta take our stocks off of it now, put it on a brand new one, reassemble it. What I love about this car, you just saw a couple of seconds, but this literally took about three, four minutes to pull all this apart. As Chris Fix might say, out with the old and in with the new. Check out this incredible custom carbon fiber steering wheel that we got from Empire State Performance. Now I gotta give a huge thanks to Anthony, who's the owner of Empire State Performance. He saw the M3 in the background of some of my older videos. And when he did, he let me know that he's a parts dismantler for M cars. So he does E46s and he does a lot of the E60s, those V10 M5s. And he said that he also takes the steering wheels out of some of his parts cars and refreshes them this beautiful carbon fiber trim and just look at the side bolstering the tri-colored m stitching it all just looks incredible really dresses up the interior of this car i'm so excited to have it check out empire state performance on instagram especially if you need parts off of an m car he's the guy to go to so again huge thanks anthony this looks absolutely incredible in our m3 that circle is almost like a perfect template for this So this trick is uh, ripped off from my friend Alex Palmieri at Legit Street Cars. You can see our headlights are a bit cloudy looking, and that's not because the outside lens is bad, it's because uh, the inside lens, while this car sat, got some moisture in it, and then it must even have grown a little bit of like mold in there. So what Zach is doing right now is cutting a hole, and we're gonna turn this box into a mini oven, and we're gonna do that with a heat gun. Let's see. Yeah, perfect. So basically we'll run it out, close the box up that should get things warm enough for us to pull the lens off to be able to clean the inside without damaging any of the lens itself or anything around it here all right Ooh, warm oh check it out look at that oh, nice. wow that came out. This one's got an ant farm living in it. Look at that. Ugh. So for this BMW headlight, there's not actually any glue. There is just a gasket which keeps this all sealed. But I would tell you to do this anyway on an old car because all of this plastic is very, very brittle. But by heating it up a little bit, uh, not only does it allow the ants to have a nice dry home, uh, it also lets everything be that much more flexible to undo it all easy like that without cracking anything. Much better. Remember what our old pulley looked like. It was missing the plastic surround. We've got the brand new one set up in place right here. Brand new, uh, this is a tensioner pulley. Behind it is the brand new tensioner. And Mike is putting in the last fastener in place there. Now our tensioner, when we just pulled it out, fell apart in two pieces. So it was really good that we just went and replaced all this while we're in here. We got the AC pulleys and tensioners to set up. Put the belts on, then let's get the radiator in. There it is. Oh, that hurt a little bit. Just a little bit. I forgot about this little guy until last minute here. Remember, it was missing right here when we bought the car. They make a ton of aftermarket ones of these because I'm pretty sure they get old and brittle and crack. This one, about four or five bucks online. That's a great savings because the independent mechanic wanted about 50 bucks for one. <laughs>
Now this is how it should sound before. There was a bit of belt squeal that's all been rectified with the new belts, the pulleys, the tensioners. Seems to be running really nice. Really mechanically we're all set. We've got our brand new cooling system, upper and lower hoses. The gasket on the uh, coolant temperature sensor has been replaced. Everything's been refreshed. We should be good for close to another 100,000 miles. The only thing that I wanna do is replace this aftermarket ugly air intake. You can see the filter just fell off of it uh, with a factory piece. Anthony over at Empire State said he did have one from an E46 parts car and he sent it over just for the cost of shipping. So I wanna give him another quick thank you for that. We're gonna replace that, fill it with coolant and uh, this part's all done. All right, Mike's loosening back up this side. Our front coilovers, brakes, everything is pretty much installed at this point, but we made a small error, no big deal because these are height adjustable. So we already fixed the error on this side. We lowered the shock down a bit and put in this reinforcement plate. Can you see it in between here? The plate is right there. And we're gonna do the same on this side. Now these were recommended by FC Piero for the E46 platform. If you're doing these on an E46, they said get these because what will happen is over time, your strut mount will basically deform. So we're gonna make things better with these, with the coilovers, then we'll button it all back up. And we'll have a uh, car with a fresh suspension. For you guys in the comment section below we're gonna go through a few little things here and i want your input on it because this car is almost done and i want you guys to like it as much as i'm really liking it i can't believe i didn't really imagine that it would come together let's say this simply and this nice starting with getting rid of that ugly black accent on the hood zach nailed the paint job and our kia red paint right here really matches the rosso corsa remember this is the original this is a repainted panel let me know if you guys can see any difference there's no sun out really right now but i think it looks again really good in person come down here we get the koenig ampliforms off of our 335 remember these are in bronze but Koenig does make them in like a graphite color. I thought the bronze might be a little too loud. It turns out they look really good. So let me know if you prefer us swap these out for a set of uh, gunmetal ones. Otherwise, I'm thinking about leaving them. And then we've got the coilover suspension from FCP Euro. And we kind of went with that stock ride height look. I like this. I kind of like stock. It gives you a little bit of room, makes things slightly more comfortable, but we could go Maybe just, I don't know, a quarter of an inch lower might look just that much more mean. Now, I do want to mention something really quick about the coilers before you get rained out now. We've done the same exact setup on the Audi R8, the E55 AMG, and now on the M3. So I'm fairly familiar with them. I think they're good quality. And generally, they cost just a little bit more, like a few hundred dollars more than if you were to go with, say, a stock damper setup with like a set of aftermarket lowering springs. But the big deal is when you order them from FCP Euro, you know, coilovers, it's always a question of what's the quality like? Will they stand up during track use and you don't have to ask any of those questions because fcp gives you a lifetime replacement guarantee on everything they sell even a damper which is considered a wear item to most and it's the same exact price if you order them at fcp or any other outlet that sells them so if you're going to go with coilovers order them from fcp euro that way you're back by their lifetime replacement guarantee and there's no questions if one of them fails breaks blows out you're gonna get it replaced. And the last thing we gotta take a closer look at, look at the tail lights. How much better does this look compared to that aftermarket nonsense? So these are an aftermarket set as well. These are an LED uh, original style. So these would look from a distance, like the same exact ones that would come on this car from the factory. But if you look really close, there are a bunch of little LEDs in there. So it kind of brings it a little bit more up to date. I'm loving the way this looks and not just on the outside, the interior with that carbon fiber steering wheel, it's a real stunner now. I mean, just look at one little change. See that 
that tail light right there. It used to look just ugly from the side with that dark, whatever, aftermarket nonsense. Now we get the stock look. This looks like a factory fresh old car with the newer style paint job. It's just coming together really good. Projects like this make me feel good and I hope you guys are enjoying this project as much as I'm enjoying working on it. And of course, it's not just me. Gotta give a huge thanks to Zach over at Ultimate Rebuilds for coming through on the paint side. And my buddy Turbo Mike, which if you guys have been watching since the early days, you're familiar with him for helping me with the suspension work. Now this car is really ready to drive. It just doesn't look it because it's missing the front end. I've got a few little trim pieces coming in and then we're gonna get that front bumper slapped on. I got to see if I can polish some of the haziness out of the headlights to make them look appropriate because again the rest of the car looks so great. So if you can't wait to see the E46 M3 put back together and looking fresh be sure to hit that like button. Also if you're not already following me on Instagram where I post all my new projects and uh, updates to the current ones like the E46 M3 or the purple Lamborghini which we're going to get an update on soon. Follow me on Instagram right here. Click the link in the description box below. Guys I got to give a huge thanks to each and every one of you for watching today and I'll catch you very soon.